Tony Skin is home. He's back at George Mason as the head coach of the Patriots, part of their legendary 2006 Final Four run as a player, as the point guard steering the ship. Now he is the leader on the sidelines. And Tony joins us on Off the Carousel here on the field of 68. I'm John Fanta. And Coach Skin, you've jumped right in. You, you've had to, to get right to work. Has it sank in, though, at all, where, where you might look around a, a day or, or get a moment to just say, wow, I am back at George Mason. Yeah, it's um, it's definitely um, – it's been a world when I'm in my car and I'm just thinking about different things and then it finally hits me at some point um, in my thought that, you know, damn, I am the head coach at, at, at my alma mater. Um, and then something else pops in my brain and I'm thinking of a, of a solution. But it's definitely been – it's been exciting. Um, I haven't had a chance to really just, you know, let it sink in just yet. Um, I'm sure that will come at some point, but no time soon. Take me back to when you actually head to George Mason, because I don't think folks know this, or, or maybe they don't know it as well. You were at Lynn College yeah. before, before you ended up at George Mason. So what made you fall in love with George Mason back then that you want your current players and your future players to know? Well, I think the the one thing was, um, you know, like you said, I had to go to junior college. And my first stop was um, at Blinn Community College in Texas, long way away from home in D.C. Um, and I didn't have a good experience, to be quite honest with you. And so I ended up transferring to another JUCO, um, Hagerstown Community College. And it was there that, you know, my recruitment kind of picked up. I played well in a couple of um, tournaments, you know, prior to the season. And um, I just remember Co Coachell coming to come watch me. And he put the idea in my head that he didn't need to evaluate me anymore. And if I wanted to, I could come to George Mason and I would have three. Um, last time I checked, you know, three is more than two when it comes to years and, you know, eligibility. And so that kind of that that stuck with me. And so I would say to start with, um, it was the people, you know, it was Coachell, his staff, um, as you guys have gotten to know him over the years. I'm the type of person that he is. Obviously, Coach Conkle, who was the head coach at Tulsa, um, he was the lead recruiter um, for me when I was transitioning. And so, you know, I would say it was the people, it was the campus. Um, it's It's that school that's in the city, but not really in the city. Um, it's a bigger school than most people realize. You know, there's almost 40,000 students that go to George Mason. Um, that's a pretty, pretty big number. Um, you know, that 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 was a big reason why I chose George Mason as a player. Lamar Butler, your teammate, and, and he's serving as a, a member of your staff, talked about your level of connection and, and just how important he thinks that is and and how important it was back then when you guys go all the way to the final four. Mm -hmm. But when you think about the connection, the the power of the people and that run. Yeah. What's the biggest thing that comes to your mind about what you and George Mason University showed the world? I mean, it's 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 one of those things where. I wouldn't be here if it wasn't for that run. Um, I probably wouldn't have had the opportunity I had as a pro, um, which which laid the foundation for me to be able to get into grassroots right away, which then gave me the opportunity to jump into, you know, a high level coaching job for my first year at Louisiana Tech. And then obviously gradually, um, you know, making jumps in the profession without that run, you know, it, it really doesn't it doesn't happen. None of that happens. Um, and the connectivity is bigger than just, you know, Fairfax, Virginia is bigger than just the DMV. Um, it's kind of nationally because it's always easy to get on the phone with somebody and you introduce yourselves to them. And they're like, oh, you know, you're that point guard from George Mason. It's an easier conversation. And it's it's helped me tremendously over the years in, in, in being able to just connect with people that, you know, you don't necessarily know. Um, and then obviously, um, as far as the connection on campus, the connection in the city of Fairfax in this area, 
it's been unbelievable. It's always been um, being able to be a part of some, something that's special that people will never forget. Um, again, we talk about letting it sink in, you know, as a player, as a 21 year old senior, you know, you make that kind of an accomplishment. You're just a hooper. You're thinking about like today you're thinking about, okay, well, we just did this. I want to be a pro. You're thinking about all those things. You're not thinking about the exact significance of that type of success. It took me years after the final four for me to realize that, you know, this was definitely something more special than um, I had realized. And, you know, it's a big reason why I'm sitting here in front of you. All right, let's take a look at, at what you've been able to do with this roster here as it's the ever-changing off-season climate of college basketball. There is no such thing as an off-season. Um, you were supposed to have a day to maybe rest, and here you are talking to <laughs> my ass. I don't know. I don't know. Uh, I don't know how that happened. But but let's think about what you've been able to do. You've added five transfers. Tell us a little bit about what went into how you guys navigated the portal and and what you see and what you're bringing in. Yeah, I mean, it's um anytime you have a, a new opportunity, I feel like you get the leg up a little bit in the portal. Um, everyone's excited. Um, everyone kind of knows that there's 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 a lot of opportunity. And obviously, when I took the when I took the job, um, you know, I forget how many scholarships I had, but let's just say I had more. I had a lot, and so we had to, um, you know, myself and the staff, we had to get to work in this ever changing climate. And I think we were able to bring in some really really good pieces. Um, you know, one guy in particular, uh, Darius Maddox from 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 uh, from Virginia Tech. Uh, who made almost 53s uh, two years ago before having a personal um, personal injury this past year that kept him out. But a kid that I recruited at Seton Hall, it came down to us and, and Virginia Tech and Virginia Tech last minute overnight, you know, they stole him from us. Um, but, you know, you know, I'm happy to have him back with us. Um, Keyshawn Hall, who I watched two years ago while, while I was at Ohio State, and I remember coming back to the staff and, and, and you know, talking about his versatility, his ability. Um, you know, he's down 40 pounds and he's a completely different player. I think he's going to be really, really good at this level um, at that combo position. I mean, and we also had a couple of local guys who, you know, were looking to come, you know, a little bit closer to home. Um, and, and those guys saw the opportunity they see. You know, at the end of the day, when your roster is bare, is bare, the minutes are there. You know, you have to come and compete and, you know, do all those different things. Um, but they were comfortable with the idea of just knowing me, who I am, knowing my staff. Um, you know, kid Jared Bill is from Siena. He's from right around the corner. He's been a really, really good player um, the last couple of years. Big guard, defensive minded, uh, rebounded really, really well. I think almost seven rebounds a game. Um, Amari Kelly from UNC. Yeah. Uh, Wilmington, you know, who's a big body that you can throw it down in the post. Lefty that I think can play the five four position. I recruited him at La Tech five years ago. I don't know how he's still in college. Um, that's multiple that's, stops ago. That's yeah, multiple stops, man. You throw, you throw, you know, sit outs and COVID in there, and it seems like some of these guys have been in college just as long as I've been coaching. <laughs> so it's, um, you know, it's been a tremendous you know, past five, six weeks for myself, for my staff, um, you know, we're excited. I think we got a really, really good group of guys along with some of the guys that, you know, stayed here, um, you know, Devin Dinkins, um, you know, Malik from Texas, who I knew because uh, he was from about an hour away from uh, La Tech, believe it or not. Um, Ronald Polite, who's been really, really good in this league. You know, you're talking a guy that can go get you, you know, 15 and eight every single night. Mm -hmm. Um those guys staying on board. We have a freshman kid, Austin Ball, that's coming in who just played in the uh, in the Capital Classic and you know did really well. Um, so I think we have we've got a pretty good um, got a chance. Ronald, you just brought up a fifteen and eight guy, Ronald Polite, the third can be, and and this past year he's a guy who averages close to twelve points per game, four assists per game as well, and the way that he can move the basketball. Have you placed that challenge to a guy that, okay, he's done it in the Atlantic 10, he's been a part of this program, he's worn the uniform to to say to him, look, uh, you're a guy that that I'm relying on to be a leader for this team? Absolutely. You know, when we when I first got the um 
when I first got the job, you know, you look at your statistical, you look at your stat sheet and um, <laughs> he becomes instantly without putting one guy on the roster, you know, 90% of your, of your offense and your defense. And so my, my message to him was clear. You know, you were a leader last year. Everyone else that was in that leadership role with you has walked out that door. Now it's time to make that jump. Um, 11 and five is solid, but there's a there's a, a huge jump that you can make. And I think he took that message um, and, and he got himself right out of the portal. So it's been um, it's been a joy to just kind of work with him over the last couple of weeks and knowing that position, especially um, knowing that I can help him, knowing that I know the place, um, knowing the success in the history. Um, I, th I think it's working out well and it's a two way street. You know, he's going to help me with what, what I'm trying to do and I'm here to help him. All right, so a little over a decade ago, you were with the Nigerian national team in the Olympics. Uh -huh. And we won't say what the final score of the, of the game was against the United States, but what we will talk about is the fact that as James Harden is lighting up the NBA playoffs, you are still responsible uh, for <laughs> breaking his ankles in a moment in the Olympics. Uh, when was the last time you even saw that highlight? Man, you know what? That thing never goes away. Um and I'm glad I'm glad you kept the score out of it, because uh, as a coach now, I'm like, stop sending me these, these <laughs> video clips like you guys see the score. Um, yeah, that's you know, that's a staple and something that it's definitely in um, it's in the history books for me as a player. Um, something that I may not show to my kids now, but when I get old and grumpy, it might be something I, I can, you know, kind of peel back to them. But it's you know, it was a cool experience. It was a dope experience. Um, it's always good to see guys like him um, still playing, you know, when, when it's that all said and done. I think it shows um, how much of a high level player he was. You know, you're talking 11 years ago, he was playing at the highest level in the Olympics. And now he's still playing and, you know, trying to win an NBA championship, man. So credit to James Harden. But that was definitely a uh, it's a pretty nice move by myself back then. <laughs> What are you thinking as as Jim Laranega gets the shine, gets all the eyeballs? Because you can make a tournament run. You could be a consistent winner. There's something that comes with making the Final Four. And it felt like, Tony, as the spotlight got brighter, he just stayed the same. Yeah. Yeah, that's, that's who Coach L is, man. <laughs> Um, we know him better than most, but you know, what you guys see and what the rest of the world sees is, um, I mean, that's just the everyday Jim Laranega. That's how he's always been. You know, I didn't, that was 2006 when I played for him. So you're talking 17 years ago. And as I watched, um, I got a chance to see him, um, for a little bit down there in Houston and, you know, he's just a fun coach to be around. The one thing that he did for us um, through that run, he, ne he never put pressure on us. He never did. And when you see his guys out there competing with no pressure, I think that's the um, it's a big factor in why they've been successful. Um, but he doesn't change his tune. You know, he could be down 12 at halftime. You know, he's just even killed 50 50 and um, he keeps it fun. At an old at, at his old age, he still keeps it fun. Yeah. And was dancing and everything in between. Just just yeah. happy. Happy, go lucky, and fun, but can coach his tail off. Uh, yeah, absolutely. Let's look at the Atlantic 10 because Quality League has had tournament teams. There's no question about the pedigree of the programs. I do look at, like, VCU went through a, a transition here with, with Mike Rhodes. Yeah. And, and it would look as though right now where the league stands, a bunch of quality programs, but – a bit of an open door for perhaps, hey, who's the new blood who's going to step up in this league and take advantage of what it can offer to a team, to a program? When you assess the league, do you sort of see it that way? And and maybe how do you view things in terms of, okay, here's how we at George Mason can step through that open doorway? Yeah, it's definitely um, – it's a blessing to have this opportunity for one – um, and secondly, you know, I have so much respect for this league. Um, when I played, George Mason was obviously in the CAA. Right. And um, between George Mason, you know, VCU, 
um, you know, we were pretty dominant in, in that league. And so to see DC, VCU and what they've done over the last couple of years, um, you know, now that they have a new regime, I'll say, and, and all credit goes to Mike Rhodes. He's done a tremendous job in this league. Just like you said, um, I feel as though the league is open. I really do. And when you look at the DMV, and again, I'm biased, you know, some coaches won't like this, but I think we have the hotbed of talent. And with George Mason being right inside of that bubble, um, I do think we have a, an advantage in recruiting um, between myself, between my staff that knows this area so well and have those, you know, real relationships. We're going to get a chance to recruit at a high level um, in this league that it's, it's going to make it it's going to make it tough for some of the other teams in the league. Um, we have to win our area. We have to win the, the two, three hour um, radius. And if we're doing that, we're going to have a chance to bring in some really, really good talent, um, which is where it starts. And so, yeah, I think it's a, it's an opportunity. Um, it's an opportunity in this league for sure. Sure. All right. If I told you two or three years ago, Tony, two or three years ago, I say to you, all right, you will be the head coach of George Mason, obviously fulfilling a dream. Kim English and I'm telling you this in, in this order. Kim English will be the head coach at Providence. <laughs> Ed Cooley's going to be at Georgetown. And Kevin Willard will be in the Big Ten. He'll be at Maryland. What would you have said to me? I would have told you, because you you're you saying two, three years. Two, three years ago, I was still in South Orange, and I would have told you that you lost your damn mind. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I would have said. But – I would have took it with 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 grace because you know it would have been it would have been an opportunity for me to be a head coach, um, Jim. That's 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 hoops, man. That's the full circle of basketball, man. You just never know these dominoes. You know, I just remember even when I was at the hall with Kevin Willard when we came down to um, play Maryland, yeah, and um, you know we 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 won that game, and that was a really really good Maryland team. I believe they won the Big Ten that year. Um, I remember getting back on the bus, going back to, um, you know, going back to Jersey. Like, man, that was a staple win. And Kevin Willard could very well be the next head coach at Maryland. I just remember that thought and then got rid of it. And, you know, three years later, man, that's exactly what happened. So it's 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 um, that's the cir full circle of basketball, man. You just never know. I'm just glad to be in the right rotation at the right time, man. That's it. As George Mason fans show up for games in the upcoming 2023-24 season, when they sit down, what style of play can they expect from the Patriots? Um, we're 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 gonna be we're gonna be exciting. We're gonna play fast. Um, I've learned a lot over the last couple of years with some of the guys that I've worked for and worked with. Um, but I, I'll I'll give Kevin Willard a lot of credit. You know, you know, Coach Kev more than anybody else. Um, the, the the offensive freedom that I'm going to allow my guys to play with is going to be predicated by the way we defend. Um, we are going to press. We're going to see that. We're going to see that 2-2-1 two, two, press. Um, be a little bit different than, than what we did at Seton Hall for those years, but um, similar in a sense to – it's a combination of what we did here at George Mason with Coach L. Um, but it's going to be fun, exciting. We're going to have – we're going to have a lot of fun, um, you know, ball screens, um, you know, taking advantage of mismatches. Um, and, and I'm going to give my guys offensive freedom. And that's that's the player's way um, of, of that's the way the players want to play. And that's the way I want to coach. George Mason, President Gregory Washington said at his introductory press conference, who better? Who better to lead those Patriots than Tony Skin? Coach Skin, best of luck. In year one, we appreciate the time on Off the Carousel. Now, I appreciate you having me on, John, anytime, man. Appreciate it. Our partner for today's episode is Athletic Greens. I started taking AG1 during the college basketball season, and I loved the impact that it had on my energy levels. I'm a big coffee in the morning guy, but by the time that the afternoon would hit, I needed another boost. AG1 helped me tremendously, especially on those days when I didn't want to get up off the couch and go hit the gym. Their tagline is AG1 is comprehensive health and the power of habit in one. And man, that could not be more 
true. It's nearly impossible to eat and drink in a healthy manner in the month of February and the month of March when you are in my business. And AG1 was exactly the supplement that I needed to improve my gut health and cover my nutritional basis for the day. I've continued that into April. I've continued that into May, and I'm going to continue that the rest of the summer. All I have to do is mix a scoop of AG1 with some water or maybe add it into a smoothie and I'm ready to go. Do it after lunch and you'll be ready to go for the rest of the day. If a comprehensive solution is what you need from your supplement routine, then Athletic Greens is giving you a free one-year supply of vitamin D and five free travel packs with your first purchase. Go to athleticgreens.com backslash field68. That's field68, F-I-E-L-D, the number six, the number eight, and you can get yours now. So check it out and help support this show. Thanks.